So Paris, I think your plan to go from working with college student population to a military population, either active duty or veterans, I think it's a great plan. Um, you're at a great age to either start working in the VA as a civilian social worker, and then you could also uh, either join the National Guard or uh, one of the reserves and work part-time as a military social worker. And you could do both. Or you could go full active duty for uh, like a four-year contract, um, see how you like it. It will require you to, the downside of active duty, I guess it's not really a downside, but the difference between active duty and working as a civilian social worker is with a civilian social worker, you pretty much get to choose which VA hospital, which VA clinic, you're going to apply and, and get a job at. With active duty, it's based on the needs of the military. So you may live, let's say you may live in uh, Texas. Well, actually, Texas has a lot of active duty. Um, Texas has a lot of active duty bases where you could serve as an active duty social worker. Um, so maybe that's not the best example. Um, but let's say you live in another state that doesn't have so many um, active duty bases. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe Montana. I don't think Montana has, has a lot of active duty. Uh, they may have one or two, but it's not like Texas. So let's say you live in Montana and you want to go active duty. You'd probably be going to either Texas or uh, California. Uh, you know, in, any state that has a lot of active duty military treatment facilities to serve as an active duty social worker. Of course, these are all hypotheticals. Um, so that might be, you might, that might be the, you might put that on the con side of working as an active duty social worker, whereas working as a full-time civilian at the VA, you get to choose exactly which hospital, which clinic, in the VA, in what, in, in which state, you know, you want to work in. Um, so it's going to really come down to your sense of adventure. You're 30 years old, uh, depending on whether you're in a relationship or not. You know, if if you're not in a relationship and you're, you know, you haven't really put down any roots, maybe go active duty. Try that out. You know, see how it, see how you like it. Uh, and here's the cool thing about going active duty first. After you finish your first contract, you can always you can always decide to transition either into a National Guard unit or a reserve unit. So that's the pros of going active duty first. Um, let's say let's say you decide to serve active duty in the Navy, right? Here's the cool thing about that: when you finish your active duty. Uh, contract uh, as a commission officer in the Navy, you will have you will have more of an opportunity to transition into a Navy Reserve uh, social work um, position than than somebody who didn't serve in active duty. I know that for a fact because when I talked to a Navy Reserve social work recruiter over a decade ago, that's exactly what they told me. They told me that their Navy Reserve social work positions are reserved for those social workers that are, that are leaving active duty as, as Navy active duty social workers. So, um, but I would also invite other viewers to chime in, to, to share your opinions. You know, th these are just my opinions, but I would love to hear other people's opinions to uh, give some advice to to Paris. All right, I'm gonna stop there, but I wanna thank you all for watching this video. To all the social workers out there, thank you for the work that you do every day for your clients, for your agency, and for the profession. Please continue to support each other and yourselves. Bye for now.